Recently, I experienced multiple internet service outages in my area. During the outages, I had to use my iPhone as the hotspot, set the internet connection on my computers one by one using Wi-Fi. But as you know, this type of internet connection is just between my iPhone and the computer. For other devices, I had to set them individually and my complete home network setup just sit there didn't get internet connection it's very inconvenient and it's very incomplete internet coverage for my home i decide to take full advantage of my iphone so in the future if similar outage happens i can simply just fill over the internet connection from my sp to the iphone Let's see how I can do that. I did some research and found this PFSense feature request on pfsense.org. As you can see, it's opened four years ago, but closed nine months ago. And the reason for the closing is iPhone tethering driver is present in FreeBSD. So basically my understanding is nothing's changed in PFSense to support it, but the driver was added to FreeBSD, the operating system for PFSense. So it's automatically supported in PFSense. In the right side, I found this article from freebsd.org. It's one of the chapter for advanced networking in its handbook. So it talked about the USB tethering feature and what command you can run to load the module to the kernel and what you want to set if you want the change to be permanent. Because the iPhone Ethernet interface thing is some built-in feature of the free BSD operating system. So we are going to use the terminal, the SSH, a lot in this video. Let me first log on to the PFSS using SSH. Now let me type A. Let's go to shell. Uh, let's run the command DMESG. It's FreeBSD command for system message buffer display. This is just some recent system message. I don't see anything related to USB or iPhone. Now let me plug in the iPhone. In the server room, I plug in the USB cable, one end to the PFSense box, the first USB port, and the other end to my iPhone. Currently on my iPhone, it's just showing the charging status, nothing else. Now let me run the command again. See the very last message. So this USB device, the iPhone, is having this address or port 0 0.3 and the bus number is us bus 0. it's just saying okay i plug in a device the system doesn't have a network interface generated yet now let's load the driver to the kernel kld load this is a free bsd command for loading file into the kernel and then the file we want to load is called if for interface and then I believe it's IPH for iPhone and then ETH for Ethernet. Okay, let me write. It seems nothing's happened, right? Which is a good sign because if you see something, there must be something wrong. So now it's a good sign. Let me run the DMESG to show the system message buffer again no output in the system message after we load the file into the kernel let's run the next command to generate the usb ethernet interface the command is called usb config this is a free bsd command to control the usb subsystem then first we indicate the device it's 0 0.3 which we observe in the previous command output. Then the command itself is called set underscore config three. 
nothing returned. Again, a good sign. This time, let's go to the system message. See the very last two line, the UE0, that's the Ethernet interface name. Type is USB Ethernet, it's based on the iPhone. It even has a MAC address here. If you want to know more about the iPhone Ethernet driver, or you want to understand what the USB config does, so you may check this free BSB menu for iPhone eth Ethernet driver. So just go to freebsd.org and search for this driver name. For example, here it explains what the set config 3 means. After adding the UE0 Ethernet interface to the FreeBSD operating system, on the iPhone, I see this screen. Basically, it's the same screen you will see when you do a USB tethering or just plug in a USB cable connecting the iPhone with a computer. You will see the same message, right? So here I will say trust. After adding the Ethernet iPhone port, we can proceed to PFSense to add a new interface. Before making any changes in PFSense, just a warning, please make sure you have the backup of the PFSense configurations and you have a way to show the console of the PFSense box and you have a keyboard connected because once you make changes, especially you will be adding a new WAN interface. If you did anything wrong, if you reboot your server because the interface and the network port mappings may be messed up, then the system will ask you, how do you want to map your interfaces to your existing network ports? If you don't have a display, if you don't have a keyboard, your PFSense box will stay there without completing rebooting. You will have internet problem. Just a warning. Now we are ready to add a new interface to PFSense. Go to PFSense. In the available network ports, you will be able to see a new one, which is called UE0. That's our USB Ethernet port. Then let me click Add. Okay, interface is there. Let's go to the setting. Click the Enable. Let me give it a better name. Say one iPhone. For the IPv4 part, let me choose DHCP because I wanted to get the internet IP address from my cell phone service provider. Then click Save. Apply changes. Interface is ready. Let me go to Gateway. System routing. Then here, as you can see, two interface are available here. The first one is for my default gateway, which is the original internet connection. And the second one is the one I just added from my iPhone. Now let me go to gateway groups. I will add a gateway group. Let me say one fail over. Here, basically, you want to give it different tiers if you want a full priority, but just to simplify it, I choose to give them the same tier. Trigger level, the default is member down. Let me choose the last one, packet loss or high latency. Save. Apply changes. Now what we are seeing is the dashboard, the default page. As you can see, the original internet connection is showing online but for the iphone is showing unknown maybe i need to disable and then enable the hotspot on my iphone let me go to the server room to check the iphone i already switched off and on the iphone hotspot setting but in PFSense, the gateway for the iPhone connection is still showing unknown status. Let me go to the interface, disable the interface, and then enable it. I'm hoping it can request the IP address. Try to connect to internet through the iPhone. Let me try it. Apply changes, then enable interface, save, then apply changes. Now let me go back to the dashboard. Okay, now as you can see, the iPhone internet connection is up and running. But because 
as you can see here, the original internet connection is showing a globe icon. That means my internet is still going through the original one. Let me do a testing to try the fail over to see whether it works or not. Let me go to my cable modem and unplug the ethernet cable to the PFSS. Then let's see what will happen here. Yeah, after I unplug the ethernet cable from the cable modem, the original one is showing offline, which has the packet loss error, and my iPhone is up and running. So the testing was successful. The internet was successfully filled over to the iPhone connection. And what if I want to permanently make the change? What I'm saying is on the PFSense operating system level, remember we manually executed several command line tools and to add the interface. But keep in mind, because we are doing it manually, so every time you restart your PFSense, your setting will be lost to make it Permanent. Let's see what we can do in PFSense. Because in this video, we have been talking about iPhone internet connection. So by nature, it's a temporary way to get the internet connection to your PFSense. I do not want to save the settings permanently to PFSense. I do not recommend you to do that. So having said that, if you are interested about how to save these settings permanently, you can proceed watching, but you may not want to do it for this iPhone internet connection case. If you already made changes in your PFSense and you do not want to save them permanently, now you want to go to PFSense and revert back all your gateway and interface settings. Do not simply leave your new PFSense interface and your gateway settings in your PFSense because next time if PFSense for whatever reason it gets restarted, when it boots, it cannot find the UE0, the USB Ethernet device. It will stop there and asking you to map your originally working interfaces to your network ports. You will have trouble if you are not aware of that. You will be just waiting and waiting and the PFSS simply doesn't complete the rebooting. If you want to proceed making the changes permanently, let's go to the PFSense operating system again, SSH into it, 8 again. So the file you want to edit is in boot, then defaults, then the name is called loader.config. You simply hit shift capital letter G in VI editor and then move the cursor to the end then put in a pending mode and now you want to add a line which is for the iPhone Ethernet device what you want to say is IF iPhone Ethernet load equals to yes then save it hmm. it's read only let me force the save Okay, save, quit. So we are done with the first file editing. Let's go to the second file. The next file you want to edit is in config folder and the file name is called config.xml. You want to find the end of the system tag. Then let me search for it. Okay, what you want to do is you want to move to the beginning of this tag. Then you want to add a new section. It's called early shell command. Here you want to type the exact command you executed in the previous exercise. Then you close the section using the same tab. 
this is what you want to uh, add here the early shell command tag and the command is the, the same usb config with the address which is 0 0.3 and uh, in my case it's 0 0.3 in your case you need to check in the system logs as we uh, did previously then set config oh sorry i missed the one part here i should say three okay then let me force the save then click in the end of the video let me summarize what we did first we use the operating system level command line tools added a iPhone USB driver or device. Then in PFSense, the interface will be available. Then you want to add a new interface in PFSense and then make the corresponding gateway changes. Then your failover internet connection should work. Just keep in mind, all we just did was just for temporary usage. And once your original internet connection is restored, you want to revert back your PFSense changes just to avoid the future reboot issues. Thanks for watching.